Washilika, I'm Rick, and I've lived in China for many years, and I've always wondered about the kind of transformation Tibet experienced from a feudal serf society to a brand new Tibet. How did this happen? Well, I believe that Israel Epstein gave us some answers in this book that he wrote. It's called Tibet Transformed. In the last half of the 20th century, Epstein had been to Tibet four times at 10-year intervals. At the age of 90, Israel said, "Despite my old age, I still hope to take the train to Tibet, which I've been dreaming about for a long time." In 1955, Epstein's journey from Chengdu, Sichuan Province to Lhasa took a grinding 12 days by jeep and truck. Even that seemed high speed then. The road he took is a magnificent engineering achievement in human history. The Sichuan Tibet Highway. PLA soldiers, carrying more than 40 kilograms of equipment and bearing the extreme cold and lack of oxygen, built a road in mountains and over rivers. This is the first highway for the Tibetan people to connect with the outside world, and Tibet had ended the time without modern roads. 上面这座大桥是两千一二年修建的，两千一五年年底正式通行。新桥开通之后，就再也没有堵车的现象了。After generations of hard work, Tibetan life now feels like it's in the fast lane on the Sichuan Tibet Highway. In 1955, during Epstein's first journey to Tibet, he found children could hardly go to school in Lhasa. It was even strange to see females being educated. Only some young lamas took religious classes at the temple. In 1965, during Epstein's second journey to Tibet, education in Lhasa had changed significantly. The central government had equipped Tibet with physics and chemistry laboratories. Some of the facilities were rarely seen even in Beijing or Shanghai. After 70 years, what do the schools look like in Tibet now? Well, let's take a look. As a music teacher, Yang Ling brought many traditional instruments to the classroom. She also paid hundreds of home visits to her students. Yang Lin's notebook of her home visit is a precious memory in her two-year teaching experience in Tibet. She has always believed in a motto of doing ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Since 2016, more than 1,600 outstanding teachers came to Tibet, which helps promote the education and communication among students and teachers from different backgrounds. In 1965, Epstein first met Ladrup at a car repair and maintenance place in Lhasa, and they became friends. Ladrup's story is that he's an example of Tibet serving the working class. A long time ago, in old Tibet, Ladrup used to be a blacksmith slave. In 1976, Epstein visited Ladrup again. All of Ladrup's family members came to the doorway when he left. They shook his hands and said, "Do come back. You will see greater changes in Tibet." Wow, you know, couriers can be seen throughout China in just about every city. They're everywhere. In Shanzhong Township, it sits at an altitude of 4,300 meters. And it used to be inaccessible to couriers. In the summer of 2016, Yang Tao, a young man from Shanxi, came to Tashizong and was attracted by the serenity and sanctity of the place. He decided to stay to develop e-commerce business here, and thus change the history of the couriers in Tashizong. From Tashizong to Tingri County, Yang Tao has to cross. The Gulam Mountain Sky Road to pick up packages. 
it's nearly a five hour round trip. Over half a century, Epstein had witnessed the great changes of the century in Tibet, as he himself put it, in the time and space that history has placed me, I feel that I have not recognized anything better or more meaningful than to witness the revolution in China and live with the Chinese people. Changes in Tibet will continue and we're about to find out more.